My name is Ashley M. Jones, and I'm really excited to be on Badass Black Girl. Thank you, MJ, for having me. Um, and if I had to say what it means to be a badass black girl, honestly, I would just say it means being a black girl, because everything about us is badass. So I'm going to read um, six poems for you today from each of my three collections. Um, I'm going to start with my first book, Magic City Gospel. I'm going to read a piece that's about um, in my family. Unfortunately, all these women passed on, um, except for me, who is also in this poem. Um, but I reimagine them as goddesses, as the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary reimagined as my paternal grandmother, head adorned in blue gray curls, nestled in the gold wool of her easy chair. She cannot walk without help, ankles swollen with our pain, square heavy glasses to magnify her God-stained eyes. As my cancer-stricken aunt, the light of her sick room, a silvery blue, her row of concave teeth shining in the shadow of the IV pole, full cheeks prevailing despite the tender sickness in her ovaries. Her string of breathy jokes defy the finite sound of her golden voice. As my maternal grandmother, her hands stained and cracking from the wash water, her shoulders sturdy, yoked for rearing. She is a powerful shield for all her daughters, ones birthed and ones found. A psalm edges out of her small brown mouth. Grace, whole and white in her overflowing smile, dotted with gold, precious teeth. As my blind aunt, the loud television, her blue-black bedroom, the sweets tucked like children in her cheeks. A cross of light gleams in her searching eyes. She answers our prayers in playing cards. Save your spade, king, queen, jack of our Jesus. As a mirror, our wombs, clean and soft and blue. Our eyes, the color of holy magic. We dream of the taste of our own merciful milk. It flows whisper white into God's open mouth. I'm gonna move into a piece from my second book, which is called Dark Thing. Um, and I wanted to read this piece because we're a couple of days away from the 4th of July. As we know, this year we're kind of rethinking how we celebrate um, different things in America, 4th of July included, of course. Um, and this is a poem that I wrote a couple of years ago, maybe more than a couple of years ago. Um, that took place on the 4th of July. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, that's where I live now. And this poem sort of came to me as I was driving back to my parents' house on the 4th of July, after driving to my house to pick up some shoes that I had ordered, because I'm a shopaholic. Um, and as I drove back, I saw something on the road that really struck me and I decided to write about it. To the black man popping a wheelie on Interstate 59 North, on 4th of July weekend. America, almost independent for its 240th year, is an interstate highway in Birmingham, where I'm speeding back to my parents' house, where the roads are clear because God blessed America, or maybe it's just because there's beer and tiny explosions in every backyard can't be novelty t-shirts for miles. But right now, it, America is you, up on your hind wheel. You straddling the motorcycle, hips so open they're almost unhinged. It's you, gun strapped to one leg, keys strapped to the other. You with your black butt crack flying open in the wind, legs spread eagle, legs spread black eagle swiveling right and left like the lane is all yours as far as the eye can see. I move my car to your lane, 
just to catch a speck of your sweat, glean some of the cool from the air passing over your helmet under your billowing shirt. I wonder, does this make us more free? You, the empty road, your blackness making room for itself here, taking up space, willing us to follow or get out of the way. Even here, where freedom from the British meant, pick some more cotton boy, we're ready for dinner gal. Don't you know your mind, open your legs. Tony, Tony, Tony is playing from my iPhone, filling the car with it never rains and it isn't. It's not quite dark yet, the heat still sits in the middle of the sky. And I think you might feel me gaining on you because you turn your head just so, twice, three times, then you're off. The lane divisions dissolving under your diagonal path toward the airport, where I'm more than convinced you'll slip onto the runway and take off into the air, sprout black feathers and eclipse the setting sun. So the next few pieces that I'm going to read are from my forthcoming third collection called Reparations Now, which will be coming from Hub City Press in fall 2021. I'm very excited about that. I can't wait to share that with everyone. Um, but these um, first two pieces from that collection that I'm going to read are linked sonnets. Um, and in my work, I really try to highlight the fact that history and the present and the future are all linked and are in many ways all simultaneously happening. Um, we've seen in the past you know, few weeks of unrest that all of these wounds that people said were healed have been open and just constantly um, agitated for centuries. Um, so when something happened, say in the 1800s, that thing is still being carried with us today. It makes us who we are. And in our country, unfortunately, those things that happened back then have not yet been resolved. So these two pieces sort of highlight that um, around the idea of lynchings or um, unlawful killings of Black people, often by um, those who are sworn to protect us. Mary, Don't You Weep, or Mary Turner Resurrected. When Mary Turner threatened to press charges for the wrongful lynching of her husband in Brooks County, Georgia, on May 19, 1918, she was strung upside down, her clothes were burned off, and her unborn baby was cut from her womb and stomped to death. Turner was shot repeatedly, and she and her baby were buried close by their murder site. Like all resurrections, it began with blood, dirt, unending light. The Georgia moss punctuated by camellias, their white hurt stretching across Brooks County. No blight to stain their leaves, just the ash falling bloody from Mary's emblazoned womb. Her baby, a fire, its single soft cry still igniting the air. Could it be that even this baby, even this one breathed angel was crucified to save us all? Maybe. Maybe Mary and her baby flew up from death in sweaty Georgia, her shallow grave shaken loose, finally free, resurrected. It turns out all along hell was earth. What else could she name that rock covered in leaf and loam, not loving, not hopeful, and most certainly not home? Stefan, don't you moan, or to serve and protect. 22-year-old father of two, Stefan Clark, was shot 20 times on March 19, 2018, by Sacramento police in his grandmother's backyard. The gun police claimed to have seen him carrying was his iPhone. Is there a police protocol for grace? For the moment between show us your hands and shoot. That night, policeman, servant of the gun, did you give space for a man's innocence to bloom? Despite the loaded weight of your finger on the trigger, despite how the night painted that man bigger, made him a giant with a fireball in his hands, despite the loud explosion of your fright. Innocence is for softer things, 
an open, empty palm, a blooming flower, a spread of rocks becoming sand. Silly civilization, you thought we'd evolved beyond abuse of power. But again, a pruning. What a flower you were, Stefan, and what holiness in your body opening, petaled in the white helicopter light. This, an Armageddon of bullets, flowers, stars, stripes. So the last two that I will read um, are sort of a pivot in a way. Um, let me see. So this piece that I'm gonna read next is about um, James Brown. I have a bit of an obsession with James Brown. Um, and uh, this particular song that I was listening to called Soul Power, it's mostly instrumental, like a lot of his songs, it only has like, you know, five lyrics and then just a bunch of horns everywhere. So this song is no different. Um, and there's this kind of, um, I guess a bridge sort of section that has a repeated horn riff. And when I listened to it, I felt like I was in some sort of time loop that I couldn't escape. And so that took me to another kind of loop that I feel like I've experienced in my life. Soul Power, James Brown Time Loop. Everything is color and sweat, like the pinwheel that marks a time jump on Justice League or Wonder Twins or Batman and Robin. It's all spinning to the tune of those horns in Soul Power by James Brown, who was, I think, some kind of Superman because he wore a cape, because he could see through you to the white meat, because his heart was wrapped in a blanket of green glowing money. Faster than a speeding bullet, funkier than George Clinton stewing in a vat of radioactive gym socks, he was the originator of a time loop, of a horn section that would not, could not quit, of a bridge that led nowhere but from one side of his growling throat to the dark loud other, and it's here, in this time loop, in this trumpeted commercial break, that I see just how caught up I really am. The man I did not love is sitting at my dining room table, gobbling up a cake I baked for his unremarkable birthday. And in the spit shine of his teeth emerges the metal shining smile of the other man I did not love, who did not love me, gobbling up the edits I made painstakingly on his poems. And in the ink, black and boogieing on the page, rose the whiskers of the other man I did not love, framing his slow and drawling mouth, his words slipping thick out of his lips. And then they were all the same man, in an endless, spinning, trumpet-filled infinity in which, yes, I could get on down, 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 but not out. Every wall, a new man dancing a two-step to a tune that will end in my demise. And James is telling me how I got to got to feel it. And maybe he's right. This is the funkiest hurt, but it got to hurt. It got to. James said so. Because when it's finally over, when the trumpets quiet down, my body still knows how to dance all over the beat, still pounding in my heart. How to recognize these unrelenting sounds, these men making dissonant music. How to turn that hard hurt beat into my own sure feet stomping it into beauty. The last poem um, I'm reading sort of especially for MJ, um, who I know to be a comic book superhero fan. Um, this poem um, uses as its base um, the Lois Lane comic book series. There's a particular issue, issue number 106, um, in which Lois Lane turns into a black woman it's kind of a long story, but basically she's trying to tell a story about little Africa to win a Pulitzer Prize. And nobody trusts her as a white woman, so Superman flies her to the little chamber and she turns into a black woman and things get interesting. So I actually wrote this piece for um, my friend Cliff's birthday. Um, he's a comic book collector as well. And so I read the issue, uh, number 106, and I used words from that issue in order to make this poem. So I think there's only three words that I added myself. Every other word is from the comic book. And if you read it in order, you'll see the words in order, if that makes any sense. 
Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, number 106. On this daily planet, my life is good luck. All supermen at my service. I should get the Pulitzer Prize on the backs of Metropolis's black community. Wait, tenements perplex me. How can I break through this plague? Their suspicious speech, these slick mouthed babies and their knock slam slang. Homeless ghosts on this daily planet. What is the reason for their weary report? Look how the sun shines sweet and pretty on their rat infested slums. It's okay, I'm right. I'm whitey, never forget. Little Africa is dejected, a neighborhood of frustration. I'll step into this machine and transform a startling switch. Black for a day only, the hum zoom of the world staring, the smoke of white fragility, its gloomy fire trap. Black is beautiful. Have you met it before, reporter? The eternal struggle of life against death by darkness, a life of please look me straight in the eye. The constant confrontation of being black and alive in a white man's world, a universal outsider, so alien, even Superman couldn't risk loving you. Thank you.